Which girl's names were popular in the United States the longest ago, versus the most recent now? In other words, what names are associated with old grandmas versus infant babies, statistically speaking? Well, according to data from Social Security's website, the oldest name in the entire database is... Minnie. Poor Minnie Mouse, she's old-fashioned. Anyway, we're moving forward through time now. I'm sorting girls' names chronologically by the year they peaked in popularity. Jenny. Looking at these line graphs, you might notice some of Gary. these names fall, but return to fame in later decades. Ella. Why does this happen? Well, as a name inevitably Alice. starts falling in popularity, it starts getting Martha. associated more with the annoying adults with the name, rather than cute babies. So expectant parents start avoiding Elizabeth. it. As decades pass, the name's bearers Nella. become elderly grandparents, making it seem even more stale. Annie. But then a magical thing happens. They die, and the newest wave of expectant parents no longer have any negative experiences with the name, and only see it as vintage, classy, Maddie. and timeless. So they start using it again, and that's what happened Bertha. to names like Emma, Ella, Alice, and many Where? more. I estimate that this cycle repeats every 110 years on average. Now we are looking at 1886 borns, which were at the heart of the Lost Generation. This cohort was named Lost because many of them would go on to fight in World War I, returning to become disoriented, wandering, and directionless. They were also the ones who enjoy the prosperity of the Roaring Twenties, but also the disillusionment that the American dream can corrupt, like in Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. Gravity Falls. Next, do you notice the box and whisker plot on the bottom of the screen? The middle box depicts the 25th, 50th, and 75th percentiles of when babies of that name were born. But what about outliers? Elsa. For those who just gotta let it go, which is why the whiskers Perfect. only depict the central 95%. So if your birthday happens to line up with the leftmost edge of the box, Brilliant. that means you were born after a quarter of your name sharers. Brilliant. Now we're leaving the lost generation and entering the greatest generation. The first name of this bunch, Gladys, is also one of the first names to rise from relative obscurity when the dataset began in 1880, thanks to the protagonist of a novel published 10 years earlier called Puck. That means if you were teleported onto a city street in 1901 and heard someone call for for a Gladys, chances were that she was a child under 10. This cohort loved V names, Jinkies, and they also loved flower names like Rose and gemstone names like Opal. But why were they called the greatest generation anyway? Well, they grew up during the Great Depression, and their economic and military might during World War II was a big factor in propelling the US into a world superpower. These women are also some of the oldest living people today, since they're at least 93. In 1891, between Grover Cleveland's presidential terms, his daughter Ruth was born, boosting the name by an enormous 1%. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt caused a smaller surge. At the start of the 20th century, one of the world's earliest and most famous fashion models became romantically involved with three men as a teenager. But one of the men shot and killed the other in a crowded theater, sparking chaos and sensationalized national news, culminating in an event nicknamed the Trial of the Century. The girl's name? Evelyn Nesbitt. And the year? 1906. The light gray region in the upper right of the graph is where no name has ever trekked. The number one name for each year sits at the boundary between the white and gray of the graph. Sometimes the Catholic Church wants to devote a special year for celebrating and revering Mary, the mother of Jesus. One of these years was 1954, and what are these years called? Marian years. Lorraine spiked in popularity in 1918, when the Allies won World War I. It's also when the region of southeastern France, called Alsace-Lorraine, was returned from Germany to France after 47 years. Babies named Jean were often born in the Great Depression, making them the silent generation. They were called this because they conformed instead of rebelled as young adults in the 1950s. They also came of age in the McCarthy era, when speaking out could get you labeled as a communist and shunned. In the heart of the Great Depression, famous child actresses like Shirley Temple brought joy to expectant parents when they normally faced fear and economic hardship. This woman named Ruth Handler invented the Barbie doll after she watched her daughter Barbara play with paper dolls in 1956. Barbara sounds like an elderly woman's name today, but back then, about half of Barbaras were still children. We've reached babies born during World War II. That's when images of Rosie the Riveter, a symbol of women working in shipyards and factories to help out while the men were at war, were common. Now this may be a coincidence, but girls' names of this time period rarely started with vowels, A-E-I-O-U. Perhaps because consonants were seen as sturdier and stronger. The last vowel name in the top 10, Elizabeth, exited in 1926, and we wouldn't see a new one until Angela in 1965. 
Linda was the first name to overthrow Mary's crown as the top girl's name. A popular Jack Lawrence song written to Paul McCartney's future wife Linda in 1946 gave the name Linda the largest one-year increase in history, plus 2.2%. Social Security's website gives us state-specific data, so we can see interesting regional trends like Deborah being popular in the eastern states. Why is this interesting? Well, that's Deborah with seven letters, D-E-B-O-R-A-H. The five-letter variant, Deborah, was popular in the west. Karen. If you haven't noticed, soldiers have come back from the war and we're in baby boomer territory, meaning these names are current day grandmothers. This was one of the largest and most controversial cohorts in human history. It was also a time period when name trends started rising and falling faster than ever before. Interquartile ranges of under 15 years started becoming common. Few first ladies have been through as much hardship as Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, who witnessed the death of her infant son and husband in 1963. The dates of her swearing in and the tragedies both show up as visible spikes in her name's popularity. In November 1952, the first transgender woman received publicity for having a sex reassignment surgery. Her transition occurred in a world not yet familiar with gender fluidity, so her name, Christine, sadly dropped by half in the 1950s. Tammy was a virtually unheard of name until a series of four movies came out in the 50s and 60s, with naive Mississippi girl Tammy looking for love. Michelle was boosted in 1965 by that Beatles song that goes Michelle Mabel. Now we're on to Gen X, a relatively smaller generation that was known for for being raised by the TV. After a scandal between President Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky broke in 1998, her name descended and sadly never recovered. The powerhouse of Gen X was Jennifer, which was the top girl's name in literally all 50 states for every year from 1973 to 78. And it was boosted by the 1970 film Love Story, which was, yeah, another romantic drama. Anybody watch that sci-fi movie, The Bionic Woman? You'll know what I mean. By now, you might be wondering how I'm picking which names to actually show in the video, since there are thousands total. And your name might not show up at all. Well, if a name ever entered the top 25 for any year, then it's guaranteed to qualify for this list, and you'll see a little badge to the right of the name that says what rank it peaked at. I'll also include names if they have interesting backstories, like Christine, or to fill in gap years so every year has at least one name. Anyway, say hello to the 1980s, a decade whose fashion was big everything, big permed hair, oversized power suits, and bright colors. Well, girls' names were also the biggest. Average name length had been increasing since the 50s and reached a peak of 6.41 letters in 1989, only to reverse to just below 6 today. 1986 was a crazy year for singer Whitney Houston, who had three singles top the Billboard charts that year. Now we're at 1987, a turning point in name trend data. Top names prior to 1987 hovered around 3%, but over the next decade, they'd fall to around 1% and stay there. Perhaps it was due to the rise of unique spellings or the internet? Either way, the next name, Brittany, was the fastest in and out. Half of all Britneys were born between 1988 and 1994, which was also the construction period of the Channel Tunnel between the UK and France. So if you got an email from a stranger named Brittany and guessed her age to be 31, chances are you'd be within three years of the truth. Chelsea Clinton became the first daughter of the United States in 1993. Also, the US was victorious in the World Wars in 1918 and 1945. Is that perhaps a coincidence on the line graph? Now we're looking at millennial names. These people were the first to come of age in the new millennium, and have lived with computers their whole lives. They also entered the job market during or soon after the Great Recession of 2008, making economic advancement more difficult than earlier generations like the baby boomers. I myself was born in 1997, so these names on the screen now peaked in popularity in my exact cohort. There's also been a noticeable trend towards gender neutral names like Alexis that happened in the 90s. Some millennial names like Courtney, Ashley, Morgan, and Lauren actually started as entirely masculine names. Think Lawrence. Then a few parents decided to cross gender lines, a few more piled on, and soon enough, the female Ashleys vastly outnumbered the male Ashleys. The best example of this is Madison, whose original meaning, son of Maud, is masculine. 
and society perceived it as entirely male until the 1984 film Splash was released, which depicted a mermaid discovering New York City for the first time and picking her name from a random street sign that happened to be labeled Madison Avenue. Now we're at Generation Z, who grew up in the age of social media, or are still growing up to be honest. Gen Z is probably the largest group of people on YouTube and watching this exact video right now, so hello! Miley spiked because of Miley Cyrus, Marley spiked because of Marley and Me. The Twilight Saga was a massively popular vampire book and movie series in the late 2000s, and Bella Swan was the protagonist. Next, rock singer Sonny Sandoval named his daughter Heaven spelled backward in 2000, and now over 80,000 girls have the name. The new millennium saw an increase in place names, Brooklyn, Paris, London, etc. Next, singer Aaliyah was tragically killed in a plane crash at age 22, cutting her career short, but her name would go on to rank 36th in the country 11 years later. Serenity is the first name of Generation Alpha and the third name of the Destiny Trinity Serenity family. Next, Ariana Grande's rise to fame in 2013 certainly boosted this name. Now, Amazon's Alexa products released in 2014 led to Alexa being the fastest growing girl's name in 2015. But the name also experienced precipitous decline afterwards once people realized the software really wasn't so squeaky clean after all. Inside Out, Genesis, and other names like Evangeline are part of a trend of rising religious names. But that's not not all that special because a huge chunk of names have always had religious meanings. Okay, so how did I get the alive percentages? It's an approximation calculated with Social Security's actuarial tables. Now, Charlotte and Amelia are part of the revival names category I mentioned at the start of this video, and Princess Charlotte's birth in 2015 has only helped her name rise further. Next, did you know that Kourtney Kardashian's daughter named Penelope was born in 2012? The Kardashian family has a surprising impact on US baby name trends, with them boosting Mason and Chloe with a K as well. The 2010s have seen an explosion in astronomy names. Luna, Nova, and Stella are all rising so fast they're eclipsing all other names. Finally, Everly is Channing Tatum's daughter, and Alaya is somehow 2019's fastest rising name. Okay, so that's a sample of 244 girls' names, ranked oldest to youngest. I know this video sorta came out of the blue and is a tad sloppy in parts. Back in 2015, I actually made three other videos on this channel about baby name trends, but none of them had commentary like this one, so you can think of this video as the fourth in the series. If you're curious about why I made it and other thoughts I have about this Abacaba channel, check out my second channel, LazyKH. I might upload a video there of myself explaining the context behind this video in the near future. Okay, thanks for watching!